Hey guys, it's Kevin again with Mix Coach for yet another episode of the Mix Coach Minute. Thank you guys for tuning in every day, and I hope uh, some of what I'm talking to you about is helping you learn to become a uh, more well-rounded, better mixer. Um, Mix Coach Member is brought to you uh, by Mix Coach Member. Uh, come and check out Mix Coach Member when you get a chance. New mixes every month, great mixers, mix feedback, and um, you won't regret signing up. I'm finding that my mixers get better every month. People who submit their mixes get better every month. So anyway, uh, this today's question is from Bob Weber. He says, Mastering Engineer... Well, let me read it off of this computer here. He says that... Uh, mastering engineers always criticize those of us who do our own mastering. They say that we can't do the mixing and mastering since we're too close to the subject or too close to the music to be objective. They also state that that mastering with off-the-shelf hardware and software will result in lesser quality sounds. It appears that you do your own mastering with those on and your mixes are uh, over the top. Thank you. I appreciate it. Could you explain why you do yourself instead of going to a mastering house? Um, I can tell you why I do it, usually because my budget doesn't allow me to have a mastering engineer. But <clears throat> let me tell you this, Bob, mastering engineers are not defined by the kind of gear they have because I have seen mastering engineers that would work with barely you know, any plugins, any hardware, um, and they can make a mix, a mix sound better. On the other hand, I've seen guys who have the latest and greatest $10,000 uh, vice EQ and compressor and can c totally kill a mix. And I've had I've had situations before where I had sent it to a mastering engineer and it came back so bad that I really was trying to find out how I could get my name taken off of a record. It was that bad. So and this guy had some really good really good gear. Um, so a mastering engineers their worth is not based on the kind of gear they have and. Um, as a matter of fact, one of my go-to guys, Alan Silverman in New York City, when I had to ask him, you know, what kind of software should I use if I have to do my own mastering, he said Ozone. He said I have done, he, he writes for uh, recording magazines. The guy does reviews of this stuff, and he said I put it through his paces, and Ozone is phenomenal. It does a great job. Um, so the worth of a mastering engineer is not in how much gear they have, although it is important if you trust the guy, this is the important part of having a mastering engineer. Is um, ma having a mastering engineer in your corner is mo mo more about relationships and how much do you trust that person's ear? Because I found um, the kind of mastering engineers that I like are the guy, the kind of mastering engineers who, not that they ever have, but that they would say, I. Uh, don't know what I could do to this mix to improve it. Now, that's, like I said, that's never happened before, but uh, you want a mastering engineer who is not prideful on what they do, and they think that your career is made by what they do, and they're saving your 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 hind end all the time. So <clears throat> um, you want somebody who's going to tell you the truth, shoot straight with you, and not be, you're going to have a relationship where they can come back to you and say, um, these vocals are a little bit buried compared to all the other songs. Do you mind uh, running me another mix with the vocal up a dB? Um, that is built on that kind of statement and that kind of interaction with a mastering engineer is built on relationship. So <clears throat> the guy who's telling you that you can't get good quality mastering with um, plugins and it's going to be lesser quality, it may not be a person that you can trust to tell you the truth because that's not necessarily true uh, because you know a lot of mastering engineers these days are using software mostly software I prefer the guys who use analog um, and you know monitors that I don't have um, but you want to just make sure make sure that um, that you're using a mastering engineer that you trust and who will tell you the truth so let me make sure I got everything that you're um, that you're wanting um, they criticize those of us who do our own mastering. Um, a lot of mastering engineers can do a better job than the mixer because they have a different objective, but it's not the gear they have. It's the ear they have. Hey, I think I just coined a phrase. It's not the gear they have, it's the ear they have. You heard it here first. <laughs> so you want to find somebody who has a good ear. And, um, and you know, if you're going to pay them 
a lot of money, it would be nice that they would have really nice sounding monitors or, you know, you know, the ear they have trumps all the gear. So that's another phrase you heard it here first. The ear trumps the gear all the time. Um, so could you explain why uh, why you do it yourself instead of going to a mastering house? That's usually a budget issue. <clears throat> it's usually uh, the the matter that we have um, that we've tapped out all the resources for the record, and usually the buck stops with me. But I do master it, but I master it myself. So, um, Bob, I hope that answers your question. I hope you um, will find a great mastering engineer that will help you. But in the meantime, keep mastering your own stuff, and let the mastering engineers that deserve to make sure. Um, projects earn your trust first okay and not tell you that you can't do it as well as they can because they have to prove that sort of thing so okay this has been an episode of the mix coach minute i hope you guys had a great week and i will see you next week